What's up, my man, uh, Wesley Watkins? It is uh, November 4th. <laughs> yeah, man. Damn right. Welcome <laughs> to GoGo Talk. Everybody brought to you by GoGo Ticks. I am your host, as always, Malachi John. I'm trying to figure out why the Instagram thing isn't going live here. I'm having technical difficulties for some reason. Um, come on. It should be on live. And it's, there we go. And I added the title like before. How you doing today, man? Man, I'm good, homie. How about yourself, dude? I'm I'm hanging in there other than I don't know what's going on, on Instagram right now, but okay, there we go. Now it's working. Now it's working, which is all right. Because anybody that's on Instagram, I'm just gonna send them over to YouTube anyway. We got some folks on YouTube already, regardless. So thank you uh for joining us today, sir. Wesley Watkins of uh <laughs> <laughs> uh my that's favorite bad. person to troll on the internet. I'm not even an internet <laughs> troll, but for some reason. I just feel like I always got to talk shit to you. I don't know. Yo, it's been like that for years, though. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. for years. Yeah, yeah. But you got me back to the. You got me back uh, with the with the posting for this one. It's all right. It's all right. Oh yeah. Uh, everybody that saw Instagram, make sure you head over to uh, YouTube.com/slash Gogo Ticks. You can see uh, Wes's ugly face. Instead, usually I say you can see the other person's more handsome face than mine. But today, our guest just happens to be about 30 times <laughs> uglier than I am. So if you go to YouTube, you'll see two ugly faces uh, oh, with, uh, and, and, and uh, battling beards. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You. Battling for the best <laughs> Go-Go Award for the best beard in Go-Go. You know what I'm saying? So I just uh, wish you all right, Y'all have to let us know which uh, who wins today. But, um, but yeah, man, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm going to start like I always start. Tell us about how you, uh, you know, how you got into the, the, the music industry and go go and and otherwise. Um. Well, I got, in the, I got in the I got into go go. Uh, I started playing go go when I was nine. Um, my cousin Larry, they call him L Boogie. Um, L used to play for a band called the Lincoln Youngins back in the day. And um, so, but oh wait, but had you already been playing before that? I was around him, yeah, but not like in a band. So I I grew up around it just because I grew up around him. You know, fam. You know what I mean? So. You go to the house. He had he always had the tapes. They used to have rehearsals at at his uh, mother house. <laughs> you know what yep. I'm saying? Yep. Uh, remember throwing the parties and stuff like that. So I was just always around it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then um, you know, I mean, being from Annapolis, it's back door to DC. So you know, growing up, everybody around that joint was playing it. You know what I'm saying? But um, he really put me into it. So like elementary school had like I I started go go bands in elementary school playing at like the uh. We, they, let's play like the assembly. That's what we was we all talent we do is like yeah, talent show. Yeah, yeah. We, we play the talent show. We cover uh junkyard, put your one leg up. <laughs> that is not junkyard. I mean, not junkyard. I'm sorry, not uh, <laughs> Jesus. God, put boy. the one leg up. Put your booty yeah. on the floor. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, um pure uh, elegance. Yeah, or yeah. Pure elegance. Yeah. All in, no, no. Yeah, that's all in one joint, or all four one is to shake your hips to the left. Yeah, and right. put your one leg up. Put your booty on the floor. Is pure yeah. elegance. But um, yeah. nah, what was the junkyard joint we used to hit though? We used to we used to just do like everybody's joints, but anyways, we do that. A um, one leg up, a one leg up. I think nah, that's it. Was, yeah, it is, but that, we weren't doing that joint. But anyway, mm. we we we, we played the assembly, played the talent shows, we started doing that, and then um I think the first time I got on like a real show was for Pioneer City Day, and L he didn't end up playing. Drum, I think he quit the band or something. So Aaron played drums, but ended up playing congos, and then randomly they put well, me on the play hold drums. Up. We gotta stop real quick because I know we're talking, and you know I know who oh, you're talking. Yeah. You gotta gotcha. pretend like you're talking to people that don't know who these people oh, are. Yeah. I'm laughing also because my first go go show was at um the talent show, sixth grade talent show at Tyler Heights in in Annapolis, Maryland. Yeah, and then. My first show, or one of the first shows that I remember, I guess it wasn't the first show, but one of the very first shows that I remember was playing with Occupation at yeah. Pioneer City Day outside on the back. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah, those were the days right there, man. Yeah, buddy. So, so Aaron was like, um, 
Like, Aaron being Alize. Yeah, yeah. Alize, yeah. Alize, but like, you know, oh. out there, like that's who I knew as coming up. It was I knew Carl from Occupation. Yep. Aaron, Larry. Um, that's all they really that's really all I was around, even though there were more, but that's only who I was around. So Aaron, he ended up playing Congos. They put me on drums, and from there it was just like I just went, you know what I'm saying? And so uh, in high school, we had bands. I, I started playing with like a lot of different Laurel bands. We was called Popular Demand. We used to open up for, um, <laughs> it was a band called <laughs> Raw Potential. We used to play, open up for them at like Laurel Boys and Girls Club. And then um, I started playing with Untouchables, uh, Joey and them from Annapolis. Yeah. So I, um, That's when Larry, I you. yeah, yeah. So like when Larry left them to start going to play for Occupation, to play drums for Occupation, I ended up playing Congos. So I started off on Congos and Toms. Um, I ain't know how to play, but Aaron and Larry, they, <laughs> yo, Aaron made me a CD of, it was three Junkyard songs, three RE songs, three Backyard, three Northeast Groovers. And the way they would do the show, they would just call a number on the CD and I had to play that beat. Play that That's beat. How, yep. <laughs> yep. And I learned, I learned all them beats, yo. And it like, and that's how I learned how to play Congo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, L will come to the rehearsals to guide me, but like doing the shows, they just put a number up and I've had to play that socket. <laughs> this was this was this was this was back in the dread in the dreads. Did yeah. you have the dreads at this point? Yeah, that, yeah, that's yep. yeah. I, you, yeah, I was dreads. like, I think I came on with them. I was like 15 or 16 during that time. Yeah. So um really? yeah, it was untouchables. I was doing that because nobody knew I played drums. They wouldn't let me play drums. Oh, for real? They wouldn't let me touch drums. Every so the, the funny thing was like it was all oh he played church he's too churchy to play it's like no oh, I've been around <laughs> like what are you talking about I, like what are you talking about so I played Congos and Toms until um it was a show we did with backyard at the Olderton Fire Hall and Aaron got off the drums Alize got off the drums to go get a drink at the bar and I just saw my moment <laughs> I went on everybody was like oh he plays that you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah. That's funny too because oh it, it, man, it's just funny because Odin's in Fire Hall, like occupation open for rare essence there, and occupation also open for Northeast Groovers there, which I was extremely excited. Rare essence was a little bit older, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, but Northeast so, so Northeast was like you know my era, like they were stars to me. And I remember Joe Dye, the guitar player at the time, mm -hmm. like he watched us occupation play. And I remember being out in the parking lot in the back and him telling me, oh, you're going to take my place one day. Oh, that's what's up. That's dope. And this was like, yeah, this was like 94, maybe 90, yeah, 94, 95. It might even been before that. Yeah, like probably 94, 95. And yeah, yeah. and then like five, six years later, I, I did, you know? Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's, what's up. Crazy. Yeah, That's man. It's funny how all these stories intertwine. I also, I feel like I got to bring L Boogie on here too because, you know, I did the I did the interview with Mike too, Mike Bombs, Mike Barney. Yeah, yeah. And he spent the whole first thirty minutes of his interview talking about how uh, how much L Boogie influenced him and brought him in, and now you yep. know that's your cousin. And yeah, yep. that's L cool. did like he's he's the reason I started playing. But listen, really? Yeah, like after. After like that whole untouchable thing, and then I in, I, I even ended up filling in for Bone sometimes with occupation for me. I was yeah. filling in for him on Congo and Toms. Yep. And then um then I ended up with uh no, I, I ended up with no, I ended up with um next level when when Dwayne Nutt was managing next level with Tidy. So okay. I, Alize oh, yeah, had, yeah, yeah, right. yep. yeah, so Alize had that joint, he couldn't do a show called me to fill in and I ended up doing it. But at the time, so I'm like 17. No oh, way you so you stole Alize's spot, you filled in for him and you jacked his Listen, spot. Listen, nah, I'm gonna tell you what happened. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what happened. So I did one show, and tight end was like, yo, we want you. But I'm like, man, that's the big brother. I can't do that. And so Alize came back to play. Something happened. Don't know what it is, even to this day. And so they called me back and they was like, hey, we, we need to fill the spot. So I'm like, all right, cool. I started doing shows with them. I was playing. They was playing at Jay's Cafe at the time, doing rehearsals. Yep, Laurel, yep I remember. Yep. It. And so it started getting to the point that I couldn't do it. I forgot what happened. 
So I call L to do the joint. L ended up taking the show with Next Level. He was with them for like a year and some change. I'm like, damn, he stole my spot. Wait, so you stole Alizé's spot and then L Boogie stole your spot. That is fucking hilarious. That is hilarious. Yep. Yep. But you know what, though? I see, and, and some of the people watching may not know who we're talking about, but I sort of see you as a combination of them, those oh, yeah. two together. Because oh, yeah. Alizé, his hands are real strong. Yep. L, he's got yep. that thumb. And yep. originally, in the beginning, you were more Alizé with the hands and all the tricks and, the, you know, all of that. And then over time, you really developed – that foot it was, too, you know, and so I see you as sort of a combination of their two playing styles together. Yeah, and then like the thing is, like for me, it was just depending on who I play with. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it, it's like that's why I used to tell everybody, oh, you do tricks. So I'm like, no, you gotta understand. Like, I grew up off of Northeast outside of the link with Young as an eye. I grew up off of Northeast and back. So I used to yep. listen to Buggy and Stomp 24/7. So I would try to imitate yep. that. The problem yep. was. The problem I had was I didn't know placement. Right. So right. it would come off like, oh, he's doing now. Nah, I'm doing it's just my placement ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. But um, right. but yeah, but like you said, but it took me a minute to learn that. So it was like once I started growing in it, I was I was gone. But after um next level, I ended up with faces you know. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um yep. oh, man, Mike, I get him on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mike brought me in on that. He put the word in for me with that. And so um I was with them for a minute. Mike Barney, I think he was with them? Nah, uh Mike Arnold. Oh. Yep. Because Mike, Arnold. Mike, yep. He was oh, um okay. he was filled at first they had it, they had it Chris and Mike, and then for a minute it was Mike, and then I think Mike ended up that's when he uh ended up going with uh with all out with 360. But that was that whole run. Gotcha, so gotcha. Yeah. yeah, so then it was uh faces you know. And then that's when L was playing with familiar faces. He ended up doing okay. familiar faces. And I remember now, I'm not gonna lie, I did steal this one from Aaron from Alize. So listen, hey, guys, so look. Alize, <laughs> he was on he was on the mic joint. So if he's on here now, Alize, I'll give you full um full hey. full permission like, to cut Wes hey. out in the uh in the comments if you want to for <laughs> that's a big brother, man. I'll tell you what happened. So I, think, I think at the time Alize was playing with Opie Tribe. And so okay. this is quick is with quick is with listen, but this is when quick was getting ready to 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 go out. I forgot who he started playing with at the time. So Alize was like, "Yo, man, I'm trying to get the um, I'm trying to get the audition with listen. I heard they um need a drummer." So I'm like, "L familiar used to practice right after or before uh listen at Charlie joint." So I told L, I said, "Cut, look, I need you to get me an audition, an audition with listen." I like heard. <laughs> I, I ain't gonna front. I said, <laughs> I said because I like yo. I heard they need a drum. I said, do what you need to do, but get me in there with them. Man, he he hollered at Scooby. Came in that joint. I did the um audition. What year, what year was this? Do you remember? This was 2010. Okay, 2010, and it might it might have been 2009 because what happened was after I did the audition, I never heard from them. I was still playing with Face You Know. So yeah. I was like, because at first school was like, yeah, man, we're going to call you. We like you, da 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 And I ain't getting nothing. So I'm like, all right. What happened was, Faces was You Know and Listen had a show at Mary Goats. Okay. And so I was like, man, I was so pissed that they ain't called me back. So I was like, man, tonight I'm going to put a foot in these. I like, I'm going for blood. <laughs> and that night, I don't, I don't know if the stars were alive, but I say, like, Faces You Know, we was on a thousand. Did the drum solo, and then at the end, school was like, "Man, I've been meaning to call you." Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, Faces, you know, I feel like it's always been one of the like the most underrated bands of oh, man. in Go Go. Like, Dumb. I mean, yeah. Hey, oh my goodness, like yeah, Faces, you know, crank so hard, and like at the time I was playing with um. Clip was playing and Sticks. Sticks was playing Congos at first, but then Clipper, like man, me and Clip used to be locked. Like Clip is my guy, yeah. Physical one that like oh, Clip man. is oh my yep. goodness. Yeah, like it's funny how all these bands like tie into Annapolis, you know what I'm saying? Like yep. physical wonder as you know, like Mike you know, was playing Clip Clip, you know, Miss Diva, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like Clip yep. used to be together. That's how I met them and I auditioned for 
wonders one time when I was like 15. I don't remember what happened. I got to bring Doc <laughs> on here. I, I, mean, I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, um, and then Mark, you know, that played drums. Yep. Uh, I played for them. Yeah, Big Mark uh, mm -hmm. Brown. And um, and then Tidy, you know, was always in Annapolis, too, you know, from, yep. from Air Raid and then Next Level. And now he, um, he used to be in Annapolis. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yep, yep, OB Tribe, all those yep. guys. Yeah, because I used this is before I remember I well did you might not know, but the oh when OP Tribe and Occupation played together at the Columbian Center in like 97, that was that was my show. That was like the first show I ever promoted at Columbian oh, Highway. Yeah, and, I remember, yeah, yeah. Man, I made six hundred dollars that night. I thought I was rich, boy. <laughs> I was like I'm about to own my nation. Like I thought, man, I just really thought I was the shit, man. Like, and <laughs> little did I know. That was funny yeah, at that time, though. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, shit, I was like, I don't know, what was I, like 19 or 20 that or something? Saying, that, that was yeah. some money at that time. Yeah, like, hell yeah. in the night, like, I was gassed. Be yeah. all the way the fuck up. But yeah, yeah. man. Um, but yeah, a lot of talent. And I've said this before in other interviews. A lot of talent came out of that Annapolis scene, man. Hell from me, yeah. my daughter that's with familiar faces. Yeah. Um, or I mean, uh, still familiar now. Yeah. Um, whatever they're called this Call, week. Yeah. Every five seconds. Um, but uh, yeah, Keyboard Chris from Northeast Groovers, Mambo Sauce, General Lee that was with Northeast Groovers. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? L Boogie, like I said, Mike Barney that's out here in LA now doing production stuff. Um, Alize, of course. Um, you know, I don't know who I'm, I'm probably leaving out about 10 different people, but but it's a um, it's it's a lot like yeah, some random white dude with some janky YouTube <laughs> show, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. I, heard, I heard of him, heard of him. Yeah, you're <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you so you get the, so you so you snake the, the listen gig from Alize. Yeah, and then <laughs> and this was like 2009, 2010, and then yeah. how, so that was I'm trying to remember where that was in the life cycle of listen. This was this was after this the was, split, right? This was you were with the group or the band, or this was before they split. This was after. So I was with the you band, with the group, that Scooby group, yeah. Which I, I don't yeah. remember one of them, but the group, the group was, was Scooby's and the band yeah. was was uh, and then and yeah, so it was the group. So um, with them. And so then um that joint's going there doing shows, whatever like that. And then that's when I started filling in with Northeast, which are at the time. Yeah, well that's when and, that, and funny we were talking about that earlier, because that's when I remember or that's when I realized because remember we were playing in that band Anonymous for a little while, which had a bunch yeah. of those just mentioned oh Brandon, I left out Brandon too. Plus oh, yeah, yeah. the blonde now, that's your cousin, right? Um mm -hmm. and um, you know, so it was me, you, General Lee. Who else was in that band? But was me too? Nah, it wasn't Bone. Bon. We had um, you remember sometimes we had Reggie playing Congos, and then oh, that's right. Reggie it Bowman, was a yeah. couple show. Yeah, it was a couple show. We had uh, we had Smoke play, but it was because you remember we ain't played like that, so it was like right. It was just like was, here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then um, we had Greeny. Uh, yep. Yep, yep. We ended up bringing DB, and then we had yep. Keith playing because you was on guitar, Keith was playing bass. I took. Yep, that. yep. Which is and so funny. Was, like so much of, and and it was just funny to me because he like he sort of like deferred to me at that time and yeah. then i had never heard him play guitar and then i heard him play guitar and i realized like dude you're like a fifty thousand times better guitar player than <laughs> i am I playing guitar and you're playing like what you, you know what i'm saying dude, yeah. yeah i was like i need a bass player so i was like i know he played bass and so i was like you know what man let me just highlight malachi Make this little switch real quick, cause he was like, cause Keith he loved playing bass. Guitar was his last instrument that he learned. Gotcha. So yeah, you know what I mean. But um, but yeah, so he had that. I started filling in with y'all. Um, well, no, but then, I want to I want I want uh, to take it back one second to anonymous because that's when I remembered you. Uh, you know, oh yeah, 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 with yeah. the hand and the placement, and I and, and but when you came to play for Northeast because you and it wasn't even through me, which. You know, which it's was from, crazy. Uh, it was from from Jackie. Jackie. Yeah, because yep. we did the contest for the singer, and then, um, and that was be that was. No, I guess 
I don't remember. Was that before I did? It must have been before I did the lip sync and Congress thing because that was 2011. So, so we did the yeah, concert yeah. with Singer, and then, and and Jackie came in, and then Jackie knew you from playing in the band with Tidy, right? The next level. Nah, she no, she or knew me from band. playing. She knew me from playing with because you remember she used to be with 360 with DB with the original 360. I don't know if you oh, ever knew that. No, so I was, didn't know. Yeah, it was DB Jackie, and then um he had another girl named uh, Tiffany. That was his front line. <laughs> Oh, and, okay. and uh and, and uh my man Tracy, uh what's his cousin name? Uh Tony. It was Tony DB, Jackie, and the girl Tiffany. So when I yeah, so that's how I met Jackie, you know what I'm saying? And she always knew me playing Congos, playing drums. So you I know. just remember that when she brought you to I don't even remember if it was rehearsal or just show or whatever. I was like, oh man, I was nervous because I, I remember, I remember. I was nervous. I was like, oh, but I was kind of like, oh, I'm glad I didn't bring him because I don't know if he's going to be able to do this. No. And you came to that joint and stomped the fucking hole in the ground. I was like, oh. <laughs> nah, you I remember what, I know what it was. I know what it was. So she, she hit you and you was like, yo, send me like a YouTube video yourself playing. But I didn't have nothing of no go-go shows of me playing. Right. So I sent you the YouTube joints I had there with me doing tricks. He was like, I don't know. I'm like, man, listen, I can kick soccer. Like, dog, I'm a, I'm a Northeast head. Like, put me in the, right. put me in the mix of good. So then 32 called me. And then that's when y'all was like, yo, come to the rehearsal. And yeah. we got to the rehearsal. It was just me, you, Deuce, and I want to say Smoke. I don't even think Smoke was there. Because you remember, Dave was, he was, was like singing the songs. I, it wasn't like Maestro or Chris wasn't even there. I was literally playing by myself, playing the songs in my head. Remember <laughs> And I was yeah, everything, I did, everything he called, I did. So, you know, yeah, and it just worked out. I was just like, like I said, like it's just certain bands, like I know the music. When it comes to backyard, right. Caden Northeast, that's that's nothing. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, end up filling in with y'all. Um, and then that led to me filling in with backyard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's when y'all used to open up for back at the scene when that joint had opened back up yep. for that yep. split minute. You know what's yep. funny? I had a show with listening night, right? And so y'all called me to fill in. And so I was yeah, like, what show what? <laughs> he was like, uh, it's with back. So I'm like, I had been trying to get the fill in gig with back because you know Bud was going through his whole situation at the time. Yeah. So I'm like, man, I got to do this show because I got to let G and Cooper and them see me play. Cause I've literally been trying to get that fill in drink for a minute. I called right. school, I was like, <coughs> <coughs> man. <laughs> I feel good. I'm like I'm sick. Jam and Jeff ended up doing the listen gig. I went. So what we have established in this interview thus far is that Wes will take your gig. <laughs> <laughs> Wes will pretend that he's sick to get a better gig. Oh, man. <laughs> Call I'm you all the way out in this joint. Man, I was listen, dude. I was trying. I was trying to get my name. I was hustling. So. Uh, it ended up getting Jam and Jeff to play with Listen. That's the that's the funny thing. I did know a feast and Jeff did right. Listen. <laughs> right. So I did that joint. I seen G and Coop came in the door, and that's when y'all first started hitting the how can one band have all the power? Oh, yeah. Break right. that night. Yeah, so oh, then yeah. I ended up getting on. Coop hit me, filling in with them, and then all the, that's when the subtle, the vibes, and all that happened. It just kept going, and then what band, and Private 71, and now Serious Company, man. It just it's been dope, you know what I'm saying? That's what's up. That's what's yeah. up. So, so okay, so there's a couple questions I'm going to save till later, but this is sort of a nice segue into them. So the, the first one is, what do you, what what style do you, because you've obviously been in the grown and sexy circuit, and you've also mm -hmm. played with Northeast and what band, and you know what I'm saying, and Backyard, which do you prefer, the crank style or the or the grown and sexy style? Honestly, man, it's, it's hard. It, I think it just depends on with who, who it is because like Scooby, even though it's grown and sexy, Scooby be pushing. Right, right. Scoo like, like Scooby with him, even though we play, it's more locked. I mean, it's I mean every joint is locked, but it's like with him, we we he want to be like this, and it's cool. But in the same token, like it's a push. Like I get the for real, like be me how I would play like a Northeast or a what band, you know what I'm saying? Right, so right. I think it just it just depends. But now that I'm getting older. I kind of take the grown to sexy because nah, you need <laughs> man. Hey, look, hey, I'm a, listen, that's why that's why I be online every day, walking, running, so I can keep myself winning and, and stay yeah. in shape. Because man, you yeah, 
you know, a go-go show go playing straight for an hour, man. Man, like, I can't even, like, yeah, I would, I, at my age, I don't even want to stand on stage and play guitar for an hour. So I can't <laughs> fucking in the, the drums, like, nah. And, it, you, and especially you got to drive the entire time. I know, hell with that. No, no, Dude, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. That's why it's so dope seeing people like Bug and Blue Eye. Like, yo, Blue be cranking. Like, I know. And Blue is up there, but Blue stay pushing. It's like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, dog, if, if they up there pushing, look here. I'm a. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So my second question is um, well, the second one that I was planning on asking later, but it, you kind of walked me into it. So. Mm -hmm um what is your goal as a musician and how does how does like because you 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 sort of become one of the more like sought after hired guns and you just went through all the 1700 bands you played with right, right. Uh, and that's, that's obviously not not that that new but within like the last 15 years or so sort of a a, a new phenomenon within gogo -Go that you know musicians you know go from band to band to band to band for better or for worse you know there's cases yeah. to be for you know for it on the good side there's cases to be made for it on the bad side even though oh yeah you you left out my band that you were in out of your oh, host yeah you but much. you know what i'm sorry hold on. it's another drive left out too for real for real i wasn't even yeah. thinking um i was in the gospel Google bands for a good minute i was with ten okay. commandments yeah okay they okay was like one of the longest they was like one of the pioneers of gospel Google. them excellent yep, but yeah, I was yep. with I was with Ten Commandments from 2005 to like 2009, 2010. Yeah, yeah, especially yeah, you better say that because TCB Tony was on was commenting yeah, that's, on that's, early. Yeah. I don't know what time, even though it says right at the top. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to call him out. I, so I, 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 exactly <laughs> right now, but that's my man. That's my T yeah. family right there, boy. Yeah. TCB Tony, go back. That's yeah. my man. Um, but yeah, so we, we, you know, we did the lipstick and congas thing for a while. So for anybody that doesn't know, well, probably everybody knows that I created Mambo Sauce, but also I was promoting shows in Annapolis for a while, um, shocker, uh, at this place called The Whiskey, and I brought, and I brought Black Alley down one time because I, 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 hadn't, I hadn't seen them play in many, many years, and I think I hadn't seen them play since... Casey had joined the band, but I, you know, I used to talk to Omar a lot and we used to just talk about business and stuff like that. And they came down and I want to say there was maybe 50 people in there or something like that. It, was, it wasn't yeah. like, it was, it's a small club only fits like 200. So it wasn't like, right. it didn't feel empty, but it wasn't like jam packed either. And they fucking destroyed it. I was like, yeah. hold up. Y'all not going to do um, Mambo saw is better than I did. Mambo <laughs> like, fuck that, man. And Casey was just like, I was just like, this Energy is the, on a thousand. This is like the best shit I've ever seen in my life. And I was so in my feelings, like, but inspired at the same time. So that's what made me start lipstick and congas. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm gonna try this again, even though I really didn't want to. Um, right. And uh, you know, so we put that together, and then did the did the contest for um, for. Uh, to find a singer, which is similar to the contest uh, with Northeast Groovers. That's why I couldn't remember which one I did first. Uh, but I, I guess it was the Northeast Groovers one yeah, first. And it, the one and then it was the lipstick and Congress, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then you um you bailed on me on lipstick and congress to go play for somebody else that was paying you more money. I can't remember who it was nah. at that particular time. And uh yeah. Nah, you know what? That was doing, I think that was just doing my feeling. Like that was. And the thing I had to learn was because I was spreading myself so thin. And it's like, that's what you learn as you grow up as a musician. Like, it's one thing to be, I don't want to be busy. I want to be consistent. So right. it's like, when you don't really have anybody guiding you, you think like, oh, I need to be here. I need to be here. I need to be there. I need to be there. And that's what I was doing. Like, and that's what, and I, I used to tell people that like, it's not that I'm band high because I stayed with one band, but mm -hmm. I would fill in here and there. Because right, right. for me, it was like, I need to get my name out there. I need to get my face out there because right. I don't really go to a lot of shows just randomly going because I was right. always working. I had my son. I yep. play at church. I play on Walk of Reds. I'm playing. You know what I'm saying? So yep. it was just like, that was a thing. I was just too busy. And it took some time for me to learn how to be consistent and yep. not busy. Like, you can't. I had to start saying no to everybody. 
<laughs> instead of well, so that, that, yeah, that sort of brings me full circle to the question that I started to ask, which is, you know, from the, the filling in or, you know, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it, um, how did that fit into your your overall goal as a as a musician, you know, inside or outside of Gogo? Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, what is how does that it, fit in? Um, so what it did for me, honestly, it got the job done of what I wanted. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. my, my goal was to get my name out there and for everybody to see I'm professional. Either, even though I fill in a lot with a lot of different people, you can always depend on me to be there on time. You can always depend on me to learn the music. I did, you know what I'm saying? I did what I was supposed to do and I just wanted to build relationships with people so that later on down the line, my name could be good. So, you know, Gogo has been paying me and keeping me and my kids' pockets good for years. And yep. it's like because I did that work of even though it might have been looked or frowned upon as oh he's just playing with these, but it's like for me, it's like I was trying to set myself up so that I could have something long run. So it's like now because I did that, I still get calls from these people I filled in with. You know what I'm saying? It's yep. still been times that G has called me. It's still been times rapper and I've played with spilled in with Bob, whoever the hell, you know what I'm saying? Just because I yep. I was able to build that. Um, not even just resume, but just build that professional relationship with them. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, that's something that I brought up a, a, a multiple times in this in this interview series because this interview series, I mean, even though it's about the stories of the people that are on it, it's it's about more than that to me. It's about how can we figure out what Gogo has done right over the years and yeah. do more of that, and how can we figure out what Gogo has done wrong over the wrong. years to do less of that. And to me, one of the things that I continually hear within the Google community, not even just Google, but just the music community in DC is people griping and, and sort of bitching about, um, about, uh, what's up Lego get, come over on YouTube, man. Um, then that way you can see West too. Uh, YouTube.com. Go, go ticks. Uh, yeah, Frederico. Uh, we love black alley too. Um, so, but people people looking at relationships as a bad thing, as opposed to a good, like, oh, well, he only got on because he knew such and such and such and such. Right, right, right. And, and I understand that, and that's sort of the attitude that I grew up with as well. But yeah. over time, I realized, like, that's how the world works. Good. Like, yep. not even just music, just in, 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 in business, general. <laughs> in everything. And, and, and it's like, don't be a dick, and yep. then you'll you know, you'll create relationships. And then when yep. you provide the, and, and a relationship is not just a, Hey, I know this person put me on. You got to bring something to the table, the too. table with that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So if both sides are, have a relationship and are able to, you know what I'm saying? Bring something to the table to help each other out. You know, whether it's at the same time or not, it's not a tit for tat. It's a, you know, the, uh, uh, there's a guy like named Gary V and he has a, he has a, uh, book called jab, jab, uppercut or something. I forget what it is, but it's basically like give, give, then ask. You know what I'm saying? Right, like gotcha, you know, gotcha. asking somebody for some shit. And I think that's where we get a lot of it wrong is we just have this entitlement syndrome and go-go that people just owe us money because we played our instrument. And yeah. it, no, that's not how it works. I mean, it, it gets way deeper than that, but um, I'm with you. but yeah, I just wanted to touch on the relationship things for a second. And, you know, and, and to me, like what you just said is, hey, I was working towards this goal. You know what I'm saying? Which yeah. was to get my name out there and to and to to brand myself as a professional that people can count on. And yep. you know what I'm saying? And that's and and so you did that. So uh, so congratulations uh, for Thank that. You. So Thank how you. did how did um, your your go go experience start to transition into other genres? Um. So. I think I mean, like, of church. I mean, I think almost I think it's a, pretty much a given that almost every yeah go go play so we can leave that out. But nah, yeah, I, I wouldn't even say that for real. Like, I think the thing is, is that like when I got with Listen, that's when I met Walker Reds. And okay. so Walker was like the first person, the first group that I really had to start like playing just like old school songs. So it's it's not yeah. as easy to just play it in the pocket because now we're doing yeah. RB. So you're playing the record. Yeah. I need you to play you the field. Go to and yeah, and yep. yep, yep. So, so you know, we playing yeah. Tim Marie, we playing uh all these old school, you, you going from square biz to um uh Luther Vandross to this joint to that joint. So it's like it made it really made me buckle down. And the 
the good thing is I knew music, but I never had been with somebody where I was playing like that on a consistent. So that's right. when the transition first started. And so um, I'm doing that. And as I'm doing that, it just started leading to other doors. I just started, I started meeting people because of what. So um, he would bring people on or I'd be like, yo, I know somebody. And then we put them on and, you know, this connection come. And then I just started going from there. So when he allowed me to bring, when he allowed me to kind of build the band around myself, then we was able to take the sound to the next level. And now we have other people coming in. So that led to us playing with um, Curl and Malachi. Yep. So um, I, I ended up- being, the, I think she, she, she was like the second artist, I think that I brought down to the whiskey when I started okay. doing it on Wednesdays. Yep, yep. Yeah. Started with Levi Stevens, I think, and then Carolyn was Carolyn, the next one. Yeah, yep. I, we started playing with Curl in 2015, if I'm not mistaken, because one of my boys, she was dating. Um, he was like, "Yo, you need to come see them on Fridays. We used to play at OTI in Upper yep. Marlboro." And so he was like, "Yo, can you learn a song for?" Because I didn't know who she was at the time. He just yep. like, "Yo, she kills. She raps. She sing. Can you learn a song for?" Looked it up on YouTube, and I literally sent it to everybody. Like we went on break. I said, "Yo, listen to the song real quick. Just play the joint, and we're gonna be straight." She came and killed it, and like, "Yo." I want y'all to do the show with me. And then that just blossomed into us going on tour. And we recorded her second album. We did that joint, um, Blowing Smoke. I don't know if that's our second or third, but we did mm -hmm. a joint, Blowing yeah, Smoke. Third, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, third, yeah. Because, like, the go joint, the video she shot with R.E., that's actually us playing. Like, okay. that's, me on, that's me on drums and toms, Brandon on keys, Jarrell on bass, you know what I'm saying? And then we did three other songs on there that was from my first album. So, like I said, that happened. And then that opened up other doors and it's like, it's really just a thing of just like being in the right place at the right time. You feel what I mean? And so, um, so how did you go? Okay. So I want to know how you went from playing to with, with gospel, go, go R and B hip hop artists to playing to with the like Thunderbirds. bands. Of all <laughs> I knew that was coming. Fabulous Thunderbirds. <laughs> like Dude, how did that so happen? This is fun. So what happened was when it was a, a drum company that I was helping um, promote their drums or whatever like that. Yeah. So the dude was like, hey, can you come to the studio? He was just like, I want to be able to get some footage of you playing. And if you don't mind, we want to promote the drum company with your face on it. Cool. No problem. I go to the studio. It's called Seven Studios in Annapolis, um, right over by. Uh, what's that joint by? It's, it, you know where the storage spot is right on Crownsville Road, like. Right when you're coming into Annapolis, it sits on the um if you're coming from Crown, you're coming crowns the way off of 97 to the left hand side, like before you get to the mall and everything. It kind of I think I know you, uh, it's, I haven't yeah. been back home in like five home in years. a minute. Right, right. Yeah. But back if you go back there, it's a studio back there. So the dude Dave, um, which is like it's a crazy studio, like dope. It's like it's up right. there with like right, it's up there like right way. It's up there right. on that oh, level. Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. So um yeah, we recorded that. He was just like, man, you're dope. And he's like, dude, you know, you mind if I call you for some stuff? And, you know, studio, for me, you get stupid. Everybody said, hey, you mind if I call you? It's like, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. So he was yeah. like, I got this group called uh, Fabulous Thunderbirds. And I was just like, man, listen, if you call me, you call me. Because that's I was just at that point with everybody, like, because everybody right. BS too much. So yep. he called me. He called me to do a session with him. Um, we did one did song. Did you even know who they were before that? Nope. Nope, <laughs> I sure didn't. Cause he, he he called me. He literally called me a year later. So that oh, wow. was just yeah. It was like that was going out the door. Like I didn't even remember. I ain't have his number saved enough. He's like, hey, why don't you remember me, Dave? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. He like you at my studio. I'm like, oh yeah. Okay. He like, hey, I got the Fabs on the birds. I need a drummer, and I told him about you. I was like, man, how much is the Drake paying? Like, I'm just at this time. This is when I'm trying to get in the session work. You know what I'm saying? That's so, that's that's the answer that I'm used to hearing when I call Wes. How 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 much is he paying? Man? <laughs> I don't care how much is he paying. <laughs> like yeah. God damn it, man, I raised you from a kid. No. <laughs> yeah. So he was like, uh, he was like, man, you know, he told me he like we're gonna take care of you good. I'm like, all right, cool. So we go there, we do the song, and they did take care of me. They they paid me extra five hundred. I'm like. Nice. Okay, you got my attention. So I'm like, yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, so Kim Wilson, you know, if y'all don't know who Kim Wilson is, look him up. Look up the fabulous Thunderbirds. 
and just go from there. You know what I'm saying? Kim Wilson is one of the greatest harmonica players to ever do it. Yep. Like these dudes are so millions of right, like the whole nine. So, anyways, um, they like that's so amazing to me that first of all, by the time you had started and it and it's sort of indicative to me, not that I'm like lumping you in with that, but it's sort of yet. indicative to me about the go-go culture is that by the time you got with Carolyn Malachi, she was already Grammy nominated because yep. she was Grammy nominated when I brought her to the whiskey in 2010. Yeah, for, My yeah. homeboy James McKinney produced the record with her. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, and the fabulous Thunderbirds had sold millions of records yep. uh, and you had never heard of either one of them. And I feel like that's <laughs> one of the things that is, I mean, I'm certainly guilty of it myself, but I feel like that's one of the things that maybe like, you know, like I said, the point of the show is one of the things that Gogo sort of does wrong is doesn't know anything about any other genres of music or how Dude. they have, not, not even just musically, but yep. business wise or anything like anything. There's, there's different, like there's different, like I think everybody, like most of the people that I know in Gogo, it's either like you're a local band or you're Beyonce. And there's yep. like a million levels in between. In between. That. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, I agree. and nobody ever really talks about that. And nobody ever even knows enough of us. And I just, it, it's sort of frustrating to me because, and it's part of the reason why I started this show too, it's sort of frustrating to me because like you have the internet, like I get it back in the nineties. Like you didn't yeah, know because yeah, yeah. oh, you're not going to go to the store and buy a fabulous Thunderbird CD. Like I right. get it, but right. it's 2020 and you can Google nope. anything. Anything. You know yeah. I, mean? I agree. And so agree. I'm just sort of like, you know, it, it frustrates me, but that's why I want to have these types of conversations and specifically with people like you who have come up in go, go, you yeah, know, yeah. just like I did, but then also have been able to have experiences outside of go, go and under and have something to contrast it with and compare it with. And maybe yeah. the maybe some of the people that I'm, we're talking about are not going to go just Google what it is, but right. they know you and they've seen you play and maybe they know me and maybe it'll pique their interest to, do, to dig a little bit deeper and try to figure out, Hey, maybe there are more ways to, to be yeah. to success. And because the other thing is success in the music industry doesn't always look like Cardi B. You know what it I'm saying? Does it. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you but, know what's so funny? Like, man, I tell people, like, it's so funny. Like a lot of time when you see other musicians playing with all these other artists, people think that they are making like these millions and millions of dollars and they're not. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I turned down so many artists. I'm not going to put everybody, but I've, I've had conversations with you, like, yeah. and like I told you, like, last year, who I turned down stuff like that, because I'm yeah. like, dude, like, I'm going to tell you like this. The Thunderbirds paid me great. Like, I didn't, yeah. I put it, there was no need for me to do anything else if I didn't want to with right. the Thunderbirds. That's why I was right. there, like, I was like, yo, I'm good, because those checks were amazing. <laughs> well, the reason they can pay you great is because they can sell tickets. Yep. And yep. they can and sell tickets all over the country yep. in multiple different markets and probably all over the world. I don't know if you guys have done a lot of international stuff, but I know. Oh, yeah, no, nah, we did. Yeah, they, yeah. man, they, they have so, me in here very well. You know, I assume they're pretty heavy in the casino uh, very. industry. The cas casinos, you know, the, 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 as someone who ran a casino entertainment for a few years, you know the 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 business model is totally different than yeah. you know a regular music venue. It's not even based on selling tickets. It's based upon how big of a gambler is going to come see your show, and even if they yep. don't pay to get in, they're gonna you know they'd rather sell you know they they'd rather have a guy come drop fifty thousand dollars on a table than spend twenty dollars on a ticket. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, no, I got you. Yeah, so. Um, but that's the thing that I think that a lot of people in GoGo, -Go, um, or just in the DM, actually, it's just in the DMV music scene. Period. Like misunderstand. It's not like you don't get paid to play music unless you're a hired musician, like you're describing yep. what you are in the Thunderbirds, or if you're a band, unless you're like a wedding band or a corporate yep. band or something like that. The fabulous Thunderbirds are able to pay you as a hired musician very well yep. because they have set up their business, business. to where they sell tickets. Ticket. So yeah. when a promoter books their band, the promoter is going to make more money than what yep. they're paying 
the band, the band is going to make enough money to pay you. And you know what I'm saying? It's like that it's not really that complicated of a business at all. Fashion, <laughs> but for some reason, it's just totally been lost on people in Go Go that I play the keyboards or I play the guitar. So fuck you, pay me, regardless of whether people come to the show or not. And now it, you know, like maybe the fabulous Thunderbirds, they probably pay you whether they have a bad night or not. But they're yeah. the ones taking the hit on yeah, that. Not, yeah, 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 yeah. Not no, the promoter. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, well, the promoter's taking a hit too. But it's, you know what I'm saying? So it's just something that doesn't seem to like permeate into the mindset of Go Go very much. And so I'm just glad to have you on to sort of, you know, Man, speak to it. You, so. you know what's so crazy? Like, especially being with the Thunderbirds. Like, we met so many. Who I, I met so many. Who are oh, they was used to it? But I'm just like, yo, this such this this. this you know what I'm saying? And yeah. so when you talk to the musicians, I talked to some musicians that stayed up like New York. And that's what really made me start. I've always been, I'm 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 thankful for Google putting money in my pocket, no matter yeah. what it was, because I've literally never been without a check from Gogo or when it came to Walker Ray or whoever since yeah. 2009, like every weekend yeah. since. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so when I talk to these other musicians from these that's outside of DC, the amounts they get paid for the work they do, like Bad would be tripping off a hundred dollars. I met a musician and I'm talking about play for one of the top artists in the world, right? When he's not on tour and he does a gig in New York for three hours and some change, he's making 60 to 75. I said, excuse me, what yeah. did you I said, and I was like, dude, it's like DC is one of the only markets. Where you have this kind of crowd that comes out basically seven days a week, just about it, the majority it, of the I'm gonna take it a step further. I think it is the only market only, where that happens. I'm with there you. are other markets yeah. where it's a little bit more, you know, but nowhere at on the level of DC at all. And I'm like, you know, if you get a hundred, a hundred fifty, two hundred, or whatever, like that, like I'm like, dude, I was making I've made tour money home and to the point like I can decide if I want to go on the road or not, if it makes sense. But I'm yeah. like, these dudes, when they come on the road, they make a penny. That's why they stay on the road so much. Cause yep. that's the, you know what I'm saying? And it changed my, it, it literally changed my perspective on how I view DC. And, and I never, like I said, I never, I never, like anybody would tell you like, man, I've done shows for a hundred, I've done for hundred fifty. I'm, I'm one of the people I work with you, but it's just like, I don't mind doing shows like that. Cause it's like, dog, you go you 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 go anywhere else and tell me you're going to get that for an hour and a half two hours think about it you get there yep. you really go for and and now go go ain't what it used to be so you they think about it. a lot of times they really do 45 minute sets so you're yep. going two 45 minute sets you still make 150 you gonna work a right. nine to five and chances are the back line is provided so you don't even have to bring have to bring your own thing like, yeah it's not I don't think people, other places. Yeah. I don't think people think about that and I've I've peeped it from you know what I'm saying so that's why I'd be like man like yeah so it, it's that joint opened my eyes up but um but yeah that's how that's how I ended up with them though it was just through the dude Dave and um the crazy thing was I recorded um the album that came out like three years ago. I recorded drums on it. They redid the Tim. I think it's the Temptations joint, Losing You. Redid mm -hmm. that joint. Um, I'm actually he actually had me featured on that joint. I was like, that was dope. You know what I'm saying? Had my crap, had my face in the album. Yeah. And yeah. so after we did that album, he was like, Yo, I got a tour coming up. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, just just hit me, you know. So I'm thinking like uh short tour. I didn't know he meant three and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> so right. Dude, we had one rehearsal in January of 2016. And this is why I love Gogo -Go so much. The way that Kim would call the show is just like how a G or a Scooby or whoever would call. No show was the same. We had right. one rehearsal. Hear what I'm telling you, Malcolm. I told them for three and a half years. One damn rehearsal. Wow. He would get on, he would get on the stage, he kind of song out, and you just better. You better be there, whatever he count out. You better be right on that one. And yep. dog, that's how I did, and it worked. And like I said, I can honestly say for the three and a half years, not one show was ever the same. 
Wow. And, it fa- okay. and it's like, yo, Gogo prepared me for it because, you know, Gogo, like, you really don't know what the hell yeah, song you know, Gogo called. Yeah, when I was, when, the whole time I was with Northeast, we never, we would just, like, the first song, we would just make some shit up unless and, rapper would, like, do this or whatever. Then we, normally speaking, we would just, like, Maestro would start playing somewhere. I would start playing something and everybody would just fall in. And fall we in. Dude, yeah. and that's how, I, and it's like, it prepared me. So it's like, I'm more comfortable because it's just like, oh, all right. Dude, I'm cool. Whatever you call, let's go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. that just was a thing. So it, it worked perfectly, man. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. Well, so what so what other than so that's obviously a similarity. Well, what's the difference between a fabulous Thunderbird show and a go-go show? What are the main things? Like in terms of like, you know, how sound check goes, like how to, you know, obviously you said you only have one rehearsal, so I guess you guys aren't rehearsing a lot, but that's sort of abnormal for most touring artists. Yeah, like like the basically the rehearse if and I, I wouldn't even call rehearsal if he wanted to do something different you might be in sound check and he'd just be like oh let's hey play this go go to go to b let's just groove yeah. on this and then he get in like same thing he get on stage and he start playing harmonica and like and we'd be back there looking at each other like the hell song is this <laughs> i don't just keep group just keep grooving and <laughs> we go on, we go see like i think my first few shows i was like that was like because I never played blues before. I could like yeah. the thing with me, I could mimic any beat, but yeah. you have to have the feel with that genre. So blues, R B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like he gave me a thumb drive of 300 songs. And he so I was gonna give you a CD of three songs three, for each three band, three. and Fabulous Thunderbirds gave you 300. 300. And Kim said, Hey, he literally said, he literally slid it to me, said he go, go learn that. I see you next week. Oh, wow. okay. 300. Oh. 300. And so I started doing, I just started going through it. And I just started practicing, getting the feel. And it was right. so dope because we being sound check. He like, hey, I hear your shuffle getting better. I could play a shuffle, but I didn't have the feel of it. Right. So then, you know, so then when he like, hey, you should try this with the shuffle. And I, I love the Thunderbirds because they let me be me, but they helped guide me. Like, this is the foundation of it, but take it and turn it to your own you know what i'm saying and so, so like, let me ask you a question before i forget because yeah, yeah. there's something similar that you so i was talking earlier about from noticing your improvement from anonymous to mm-hmm. to when you started filling in with us in northeast and then you mentioned that he you know was re- remarking on your your uh you know the improving the feel of your yeah, yeah shuffle so mm-hmm. what is your process as a musician because obviously you must have some type of process to improve upon the things that maybe aren't your strength at one point yeah what do you what do you do like what's your what's your practice routine like mine when i was coming up my guitar teacher like i, I had to practice an hour a day no matter what and and if i i had to practice i had to when i played something i had to do it 10 times perfectly when i was Got at my you. level or she would make me start all over again. You know what I mean? If I messed yeah. up once, I'd start all over again. So do you have something similar in your process? Not, that people can so, take? so my process is, number one, I'm always asking, like, I love critiques. I love when people critique me. Like, I think the only way you can grow is having somebody tell you, hey, listen, you, you know what You need to do this. So, Well, here's my critique. You suck. But anyway, all right, go ahead. <laughs> and I hate you. But... <laughs> But yeah, so it's like that's the that's the one thing I always do off the rip. You know what I'm saying? It's right. like, yo, tell me, tell me what you want, cause like I said, that's the only way you grow. And especially when For you sure. step into an arena with somebody that's been in that arena longer than you, yep. you'll be a dummy to just think that you know everything. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like well, once they, you would be a dummy, but yeah, quite a lot of people do. I, and that's I know, and that's the crazy part. Nah, and, and that's the crazy part. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, I honestly don't understand how people can't take critiques. Like that's how you yeah. grow. That's Yep. Anyways, so yep. um, I'll take that, and then for me, it's just repetition. So it's not even just a thing of playing it. Like for me, I don't even get the chance to practice like that now. Honestly, right. I practice my head, so I do a lot of air. So I'm I'm literally sitting there, you know what I'm saying, yep. playing like that. But it's literally like I'm literally playing the song in my head. I'm playing everything. I'm listening to it. So I'm trying to grab the feel. So if you're mm-hmm. telling me I don't have the feel. It's not that I can't play it. I just don't have to feel. So I need to listen to the song. I need absorb. to absorb. Yeah, I need to take that whole song on so that now when I play it, it's like, yo, that's what the hell I'm talking about. And that's what yeah, happened. It's not just knowing the parts. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it was the it's most bigger than that. Thing. Yep. It's bigger than that. 
So yep. yeah, that's and the I whole told, process. There's a band that in Miami that I went down to. Uh, they they brought me down to Miami to consult for them for a few days. And one of the things that I told them that I noticed in their rehearsal, which is not unique to them, I'm not shitting on them at all because they they took the you know they took the critique just like you're saying uh, very well. Uh, but what I noticed with a lot of bands coming up is a lot of bands uh, or even just musicians will practice until they get something right. As And and what I always say, and, and I'm sure I got it from somewhere, I can't remember who, but don't practice until you get it right. Practice until you can't get it wrong. You know what I mean? And that's sort of like with the, that, that sort of like absorbing it and getting that feel like you have to know, you know, it's you got to have the muscle memory. It's not just about, oh, yeah, we did it one time and got it right. Did you, what, something happened to your audio? Did you change something? I can see you, but I can't hear you. Your microphone is not muted. Huh, I don't know what happened. Everything, I mean, everything looks fine on my side. I can't hear you. I can see you fine, but I can't hear you. No, you know what? Check your, because you got your he earphones in. Check and make sure your audio didn't switch off of the earphone, off the AirPods. So your microphone, check. Um, let me see. Let's see something real quick. Yeah, I'm everything is right from the microphone. Let me do this. I'm going to. I'm going to, I'm going to kick you out real quick and then just come back in to just use the same link to come back in and we'll, and we'll try to do it that way and see if that, that fixes it. Okay. All right. Everybody can still hear me, right? It was not, uh, it was just Wes. Um, everybody that's, I see that we got some people still on and you guys can still hear me. Can you type in the comments and let me know that you can hear me? And I'll make sure that it's just on on his side and not on mine too. Lego or uh, Phil Moore Wax, if you guys are still on, can you? Um, okay, I know you can hear me on Instagram, but I'm I'm talking about on YouTube. Thanks, Federico or Federico. I'm sorry. Um, nobody is responding to me on YouTube. So, oh, Lego. Okay, yeah. So you can. All right. Well, here's Wes again. Let's see. All right, say something, Wes. Nice. Uh uh. And 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 they they can hear me, but they can't hear you for some reason. Try to take your try to get off your your AirPods and just use your phone. Uh. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, we can hear you now. Yep. Damn, can you hear me? What? Yeah, I hear yeah. You you bought the um AirPods from Potapsco Flea Market. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys hear what? Right, I can hear. Um, cool. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, so, what what is a typical um, <laughs> Lego? So you ran out of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, um, what um, what is a sound check? So you say you don't really rehearse with with Fabulous Thunderbirds, but I assume sound check for Thunderbirds. It's going to be different. Tracy is going to be different than sound check for a uh, serious company, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So like the sound checks are just like literally number one. You um, it's different from Google in general because you know most of the time when we sound check, you in the club, the DJ's playing, so you're trying to sound check over that. So you know a fabulous Thunderbird sound check. We there three hours before. Um, I'm making sure all my drums is, or whoever the the the, the stage manager is, they making sure my drums is good. Um, going through each tom, each snare, cymbals, overheads, all of that. We going make sure everybody's good, make sure everybody mind good. Then we going groove for a minute, make sure that joint is straight. Like the thing I like, I, I love about the, the Thunderbirds sound check with us would take 20 minutes. Right. Like as long as everything is set up on time. Yeah. Like. It take twenty minutes because everybody, unless, like I said, unless it's something that Ken would want to do different, or he might be like, you know, let's 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 groove on this or groove on play play go right. to eat, you know what I'm saying? But other than that, it would be that. Like they're very anal about being on time, sound check, 
getting the hell about so we can chill. What happens if you're not on time to sound check with the fabulous Thunderbirds? Uh, honestly, never. I never want to find out because hey. not, nine times out of ten, it's gonna be something with your check. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So I always made sure, you know, uh, that I was on time. Everybody always did. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we were real big on that. And the manager, Glenn, my man Glenn, um, like, one of the dopest managers I ever worked with in life, dude. But Glenn what would make sure. Dope? What makes him dope? Man, one. Glenn, yo, one, one, I think it's just because he knows his shit. Glenn was on top of everything. You know what I'm saying? So, and especially when I came to the band, he made sure that it wasn't anything that I lacked that I didn't need. You know what I'm saying? So whatever I needed, he made it happen. So it was like when it came, I'm not a DW person. Drums, I'm like, man, you know, I don't, I don't mess with that. Oh, hey, get this. No, he don't, he don't play that. He, he need this. And I was like, first time he did, I'm like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Business was always good. Always, he always, we always knew when. What he's the manager, or he's like the tour manager. He's both. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so he took like like the the Thunderbirds. The the, it's very small. You know what I'm saying? And so you know, keep it like that because everybody knows everybody. Everybody's family. Everybody trusts everybody. You feel what I mean? But um, but yeah, man, he took care of everything. I'm always knowing. The day I'm gonna get my check. It was it was like a job, but just minus the the job part. It was the you had you know what I'm saying. You have yep. certain qualities of the job, but it wasn't work. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So um, yeah, he just made it come. Like the thing I loved about them, because I'm playing with a whole bunch of older white dudes for real. For I'm thinking like, ah man, I'm gonna have to dress this way and do this. And it was like Glenn and Kim. They man, we just want you to be you. Like we love what you do. Right. We love how you are. Be you. Come in here, kill it, and we gone. And you know that's like that's one of the things that stuck out to me with him as a manager. Then like sometimes he have his times. Hey, you know what? I'm taking y'all out to eat. Order whatever you want. Hey, okay, nice. boss. <laughs> right. Nice. You know what I'm saying? So, let me ask you this: What um um what things can Cause, cause it's gonna be very, you know. I remember when I had Mambo Sauce, and we yeah. would play shows at venues that were not like mostly we played at sh- venues that were not go go venues, and we would right. have to be at sound check three hours before and the events. show yeah, yeah, yeah. or the yeah. afternoon, and, and they all just bitched and moaned and cried and complained. One person <laughs> uh, more uh, <laughs> and. So, and I and I feel like there's this thing in GoGo where GoGo GoGo musicians are like, and I'm not trying to like shit on GoGo musicians at all. I'm trying to like yeah. figure out a way to make what we do better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I feel like there's this thing. Well, if I was getting paid, you know, whatever, three hundred, five hundred thousand dollars or whatever per show, then yeah, I'd show up three hours earlier too. But it's like. Already know what you're doing. If you if you were doing the things you need to like showing up three hours early for sound check to make sure your shit was tight and your shit sounded good, then you would get to that three to five hundred thousand dollars. I think the I already get what you're saying, and I think the thing is that people have to change their mindset from a local mindset to a national mindset. Yeah, so it's like when you think on when you just think here. That's where you're going to stay. So yeah. then when, like you said, so it's like when people tell you like, hey, we need you to be here three hours early. And then it's like, what you mean be at three hours? But it's like outside of here, that's how it works. Right. You're not like you wouldn't go see your favorite artist perform at the MGM or whatever. And they're sound checking when you in there over right. the mute. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be like, yeah. what the hell is this? It's not, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's how it works. But I think just because we been doing that in Google for so long everybody's comfortable and they think this house will be and it's like nah like but again it's like you have to change your way of thinking like don't think with a local mindset man think with an international or national mindset and that's how it works when you're international when you're making all the big money if you if you can't act like you have to have that same mindset when you got five dollars you gotta have the same 
mindset five dollars so when you get to five million dollars you feel what i'm saying right well it's a question i think it's the question of in which order you put the things it's yeah. like well if i was successful then i would do these things that successful people do and it's like you're not going to be successful unless you, you do the things do that you need yeah, yeah. Yep. first and it's like i just don't understand why that doesn't seem to get through anybody's brain it's just like one plus one equals two. Like there's a reason that successful people are successful people. And I'm not saying, I mean, clearly in go, go, you know, and, and in certain forms, you know, there's a lot of external socioeconomic conditions that make yeah. it difficult for people in a go, go to make it than, you know, your average rock band or whatever. And I'm not negating those things or saying they don't exist or anything like that. But I am saying, you know, maybe using the fabulous Thunderbirds so much is a bad example because obviously they're an all white band except for you. And obviously, <laughs> and, you know what I'm saying? And so yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. what I'm saying is, is that, I you know, it. like even if you just look at rappers or whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's not a black thing or a white thing. It's not just uh, people that are successful versus people that are not successful. And, and the other thing is, how are you defining success? You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And agree. so that, you know, uh, back to the, what we were talking about earlier is like, it's, you know, success in the music industry doesn't have to be Beyonce, but it's like, if you're making 50, $60,000 a year as a full-time musician, yeah. what the fuck is wrong with that? People are making 50, $60,000 a year as like an executive assistant. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you play drums, like, why wouldn't you rather play drums and make the same amount of money? You uh, know what I mean? Thanks. Yeah. I so, it. so you have also been very, I don't know about very successful, but at least one of the more successful people I know at um, getting endorsements and keeping endorsements uh, from, um, you know, from, from music, music companies. You just told me about another big one today. Congratulations on that. Um, so for, for someone who is in the, you know, maybe in the go-go industry or just in the DMV music industry or anybody that may be watching that's a musician and maybe thinking, how can I, get an endorsement. Can you do two things? One, explain what an endorsement is. And two, you don't have to explain it, you know, like give away any secrets or anything, but just give people like some best practices. Yeah. Yeah. What they can do to put themselves in a position to get one. Well, I think, well, first off, like endorsements have changed from what they were back in the, back in the day to what they are now. So I know yeah. a lot of the old, especially a lot of the OGs that were endorsed, whether it was drums based or whatever, you know, they're not getting checks like they were back in the day. You know what I'm saying? So it depends on. So, back, so when you're talking back in the day, you're talking how many years like, ago? Like 90s, early 2000s. Like a lot, a lot of, a lot of folks used to get checks to endorse the gear. You know what I'm saying? Promote and stuff like that. And I don't know exactly when it changed because I wasn't endorsed during that time. You know what I mean? Right. So now it's a thing of um, some, a lot of, a lot of times when you get endorsed with a company, they might just hit you with a, nice little discount what it basically ends up being yeah. so, so i tell people like an endorsement is not all it's cracked up to be depending on because it depends on who you are and where you are on the totem pole so yep. it's like if you don't really have a name for yourself if you're not really out here putting in work and it's and it's not being noticed you're not going to get nothing so it's like you may get an endorsement but the percentage you get off the endorsement is the same thing you can go get at guitar center so it's like yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, sometimes you'll get into an endorsement. It's like, is the company really paying attention to you? Because they have a million other people on the roster. So yeah. you just, so like, what are you doing to stand out? And so for me, like me and you had a conversation like some months ago and I told yep. you, I was telling you everything. And I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a huge, I'm not huge on endorsements unless it's a partnership, unless I can get yep. something out of it and you're getting something from me because yep. a lot of companies have, they seen my social media. I got 70, Four thousand, whatever it is, plus people following me on Instagram. So yeah, it's like, everybody knows, like he only put this interview in his stories. He ain't put it in his feed. Nah. <laughs> he's a big blue drummer now, and he's like, "Fuck those." Nah, up. <laughs> and see, and see, but see, I'm gonna tell you though. But and see, the thing is, like for real, for real, like I messed up because I had them put up like two posts already, and so I'm like on my social media, I'm 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 anal on everything because I went. When I was doing graphic design for my church, they sent me to a school. Uh, they said it's a class for social media. So, you know, they yeah. tell you how many times you're supposed to post a day, the yeah. times, and da, da 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 da. And I was like, put too many joints. I was like, ah, shit. So, okay. Well, you keep know, in so mind also, for in the same way that endorsements have changed, 
the way social media works and the algorithms, et cetera, changes like yeah, every yeah, that's true. couple of months. So depending on how long ago you took that class, things may be a little that's, different. Now, that but, is very true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the thing with endorsements, though, it's like I didn't want to. At first, I used to just want to get on with endorsements. But then it's like when you figure out what everything is, like, eh, well, it's not really what it's cracked up to be. So I started telling myself, like, I'm not going to get an endorsement. I'm not going to take on an endorsement unless I'm getting something in return, because I've been able to build my social media to what it was. I don't I didn't have a person doing it. I did this. I strategically yep. strategically planned everything I did from the videos, the songs I chose to do everything. And it grew. So it's like. I don't mind spending money on what I like to play. Why? Because I like to play a product. I don't right. need to endorse you and I don't need your stamp for me because I don't care about not and, and not to say it like this, but I don't care about gaining follow. I can gain followers. I can go do a certain kind of video and get follows. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so it's like it has to be a, a partnership type. And so I finally got with a company when we had a two hour conversation and they like, listen, this is what we want to offer you. We want to, we want you to help us in this area. We're going to help you in this area. Cool. I can rock with you. You know what I'm saying? And so my advice would just be to people like figure out why you want an endorsement or do you really need an endorsement? Like mm -hmm. the thing is you have to make these companies need you versus you trying to make it seem like you need them or you want them. Cause yep. at the end of the day, they don't operate unless we operate. Yeah. So I put myself in a place where I can control what I want. And it's respectful and not, not being ignorant with it, but it's like, yo, you got to come to me correct when you come to me for something. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's, it's what you call leverage. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And it also goes back to the early, early part of the conversation we were having about the Fabulous Thunderbirds. The Fabulous Thunderbirds are able to pay you a certain amount of money because they're able to get paid a certain amount of money because they have the leverage of being able to sell tickets. Yep. You know what I mean? So, and, and this is all, this all ties into, it's the same thing as the influencer culture that we're going through now. You know, like every time I post a photo, like, first of all, I've become, I don't know if you noticed, but I became like this Instagram narcissist because I have a friend that constantly harasses me about it. And I'm, I'm I'm very uncomfortable taking pictures of myself or, right. you know, like even doing this is I don't really like this. Like I don't I like you. Being on camera. You know what I'm saying? And and I feel like a douchebag every time I post a picture of myself. And especially when I like set up a tripod to take a picture of myself, I really feel like a douchebag. But every time I do it, now I get these little, you know, these clothing companies or watch companies or yeah, hitting you. I get the same thing. Like, yeah. Hey, let's collab. And they want to, and it's sort of the same thing. Like they just, all oh, this is a discount. And then they're going to give you a cut of if somebody uses your link to sell something or something like that. But that's sort of like become pervasive just in our culture altogether. And, you know, obviously music companies have been doing this for a long time. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's sort of like if they're a bigger company, they're endorsing you to, to a certain extent, which gives you credibility. Yeah. But, now today you're endorsing them also, and especially if you have a following, like a social following, like you have a decent one, yeah. you're sending people to them. So it yep. is sort of a symbiotic relationship going back to what we were talking about earlier, which is if you're going to have, you know, the all business world is based on relationships, but it's based on relationships of two different people that are bringing value to the other person, not one person that is just sitting back and the right. other person is doing everything. You know what I'm saying? And that's sort yeah. of like, the 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 sort of like um i guess the 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 vibe that i get from most people in the dmv music scene is just like i'm just supposed to play music and somebody else is supposed to do everything else and it, you know your 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 story has been really sort of inspiring I me mean, well first of Thank all you. tell 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 everybody about how you became like the um the 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 black musician joel olstein <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yo i'm gonna tell you like like <laughs> Like the, the short version basically is just, you know, I went through the depression. I went through the suicide. I went through the alcoholism, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, for a long time, you know what I mean? So I tried to take myself out about four or five times. The last time was 2014, tried to take a whole bunch of pills. Well, not tried, took a whole bunch of pills, chased it down with Jack. I should be dead right now. I done put the gun to my head, tried to cut myself. Everything you could think of. Tell people what was going, what, what, what was going on? And I'm bringing this up because, you know, obviously mental health is a big thing in our society yeah. today. What was going through your head 
uh, or not, not what was going through your head. What was going on in your life at that, that time? Two thousand fourteen, ostensibly, at least from what I'm thinking, like you're you're That's accomplishing what I, all the goals that you said you wanted to do. You're filling in with all these bands. You've got enough to eat. You're taking care of your son. You got a roof over your head. To the yeah. outside world, it seems like things are okay. But why does you know what? So what, so it's it, it happened. Everything was just like it was just life issues from relationships. You know, I came off the fighting for my son in court and that that did a number on me you know what i'm saying yeah. and really really what it really what it boiled down to was a lot of times we don't deal with issues and as a man you think that ah oh, man i can deal with i'm tough i just i put that to the side but yeah, yeah, yeah you suppress it but then the thing is you suppress so many and you're not even thinking and it's like dude i have all this stuff that's bottled up so now i got all these different issues running in my mind so to clear my mind from it I'm going to store. Let me just grab a drink. I drink, but now I'm drinking more than I normally do. So now instead of me drinking maybe a few nights a week, if I just go out to have some fun, now I'm drinking every day. And now every day turns from me starting to drink at happy hour to me drinking at 12 p.m. Now 12 p.m. turns into me drinking at 8 a.m. Now 8 a.m. is me yeah. drinking 5 a.m. all the way into the night. And I'm spending about $300 in the liquor store in almost three to four days. Wow. You, you know what I'm saying? And so, like, it took me some time to get out of that. And it took me time to really, you know, after my last suicide attempt, that's when I was just like, yo, like, you, you trip. You got to get yourself together. You got to do this. So, you know, I went and for real got myself together because it was like, yo, tomorrow's not promised. And so I live by this philosophy. Like, there's nothing we could do to change, to, to change. Like, when, when a situation happens, it was designed to happen. And so you could change it. But the thing is, like, how are you going to view it? So my mentality is... Now, I could be mad and look at this situation, say, woe is me, and all oh, the, the world came down on my head, or I could deal with it, and I keep moving. And so that's why I always have the pot, because I always see a positive and a negative, no matter what it is. So you're not going to keep me. Have you always been like that? No, nah, I haven't. I haven't. I got like this. Do you know, Do you know like, what made you turn into that? Yeah, that's what I said. I, I, I say that, I ask that specifically because... That's something that I feel like is pervasive in this culture is a is a is a an immediate negative reaction to everything. You can't yeah. control what happens to you. You can only control how you react to it. And so I'm curious to know, was there some kind of, you know, like it um, was catalyst the, that changed that for you? Not it was just literally just like. I realized how selfish I was and I had to apologize to my son because I'm like, dude, you you for real try to take yourself out. You almost left a kid here. You know what I'm saying? And so I made a promise to myself that day, like, oh, you're going to deal with whatever the hell comes your way. You're going to get through it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you, it's literally like I had to look at myself in the mirror and just be like, the hell are you doing? Like, I, I for real had to have that conversation. Like, what in the hell are you doing? Like, it's people out here losing their life for nothing and you try to take yours away and you know what i'm saying so it's like that's why I always every day i try to be positive but i mean you know you're gonna have days it's gonna be like hey you're human but it's like nah dude like that's what changed me like i'm like dude in a minute i could be up out of here and the right. fact that i'm still here it's like so it's like now it's like what are you gonna do with the time that you have right and so that's why it's just like nobody can tell me i don't care what anybody say man when you don't i've gone through I've gone through depression for four years. I'm not talking about a bad day. I've gone through, couldn't get out of a black hole, ain't want to be by nobody. I played it off of people, was drinking toilet. Like, people closest to me will tell you, like, West Screws was loose. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's been, a, it's been a few times L had to talk me off the ledge, literally, literally, from two seconds from blowing my head off. You know what I'm saying? And right. so it's, it's like, yo, when I, when, I, when I realized what I was doing, I just I just corrected it and I haven't looked back since. You know what I'm saying? That's that's amazing, man. Uh and yeah. I, I think and and it speaks to also like, you know, uh as I said, I think I need to have, uh, probably need to get El Boogie on here because, you know, like he's clearly been an in, a positive inspiration. Oh yeah. to a lot of people. Um, and it speaks to, you know, they say that you're the, you know, you're the, the, the combination or the amalgam of five people you surround yourself with. Yep. And it, I think it comes down to like really, you know, trying to surround yourself with people that 
are positive as well. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just hoping, I'm hoping that this is something, because one thing I noticed is like, when we came up in the nine, I mean, you're a little bit younger than me, but I remember when we came up in the nineties, like hip hop culture was, was, and even go go culture was, you know, fuck bitches. Like I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm not, not taking, you know, like, like deadbeat dad kind of like, I'm not saying that everybody was like that or whatever, no, yeah, okay. like a normalized thing. And I've seen like, well, over the last 10 years or so, you know, within within the music culture and just in general, just like on social media and shit, like it's and and you were even one of the first people that I, that I was around, and I don't just mean in the black community, I mean in the community, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, but you were one of the first people I I was around that was like, no, I got my son, I can't do it. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like that that like that was always your first priority, like no matter what happened. Yep. And now it's sort of like cool to be. A father now again, you know. Right, what right, right. And so, saying. yeah. So my question is: is can we like, like, I kind of like, and maybe I'm just being overly ambitious, but I, I want to make it cool, like, and go go be positive. Like, it's it seems like people o- only re- like respect the neck. Like when I, the reason I started this show, or there's a million reasons I started the show, but one of them was because of, you, may, you may remember, like a year and a half ago, I did like, a, or maybe two years ago, I did a Facebook rant. Of, of it was like an hour long and it was like 10 reasons why GoGo isn't bigger and why it's your fault or something yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. that. About like 10,000 views in two days. And I had a friend and I didn't like hearing it from him at the time. I had a friend and he was like, yo, you just seem like you're like the fucking white dude screaming that black people were telling them what to do. And I was like, oh, well, that's not what I, what you I'm, know, yeah, I, yeah, like yeah. I, I grew up in this community and this is what I came from and this is I played in bands, you know, whatever. And I was like, that's not what I want to portray at all like that's not what i'm saying in any way shape or form so that's why i sort of revamped it to this like you were talking about earlier with the mindset like the mindset comes from somewhere you know what i'm saying so like and and in the same way that it wasn't cool to be a dad 10 years ago and now it is like can we change that mindset so like yeah it maybe it's cool now to like show up late for rehearsal and like be drunk on stage and you know what I'm saying and and talk shit to each other on Facebook all day long or can we reverse that too and I'm I'm hoping that it's not just like it's because we're old now because you know obviously the music industry for for some part is 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 a youth driven culture no. and I'm hoping that it's not just like oh yeah we're like the old old dudes you know what I'm saying uh, I'm not being popular like our parents and shit and nobody cares I think what it is is just people people have to learn to change their own personal mindset period yeah is that's that's the only way it's going to change you could talk to a person they blew in the face but if you're not willing to change your mindset it's going to stay the same right you know that's, what I'm saying? True. that's true but i but i feel like i don't even i can't even point to what happened but 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 there's a time you know there's it's it's like we as a society like there's certain things are cool at certain times they're not like you know what i'm saying like marijuana was like the, yeah, yeah, yeah. drug and now it's like legalize the shit you know right, what i'm saying right. you know what i mean so things change and there there are i think there are things that happen that are catalysts for those change and i i'm not smart enough or well versed enough to know what all of them are but you know anyway i just i just i, I appreciate you know the 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 videos that you put up and the positivity right. that you put out and right. you know obviously my my videos are a lot more focused on this you know, specific genre and culture of music or yours are just, you know, sort of for everybody. But I, I kind of, you know, I, I, I'm glad that you came on because I sort of want to, you know, try to spread that and help spread that message, you know, that, that you spread as well. So part, part of spreading your message has been, you've written how many books now? Uh, two working on the third one right now with my son. Yeah. We're doing a uh, children's book next. So where can but what I want you to tell us about it, but but in the meantime, where can people get the book? Uh right now you go to Amazon, uh you can go to Barnes and Noble. The first book is called The Life That Created My Own Sound. The second book is called Motivation Plus Drive Equals Purpose. So they just look up Wes Watkins and they'll yeah, find yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, look up right. Wes Watkins. Put, yeah, so you just go to Amazon.com and put in uh Wes Watkins. I'm gonna put it up on the screen real quick here. Okay, so yeah, so you just go to Amazon, um, and and you can get either one of uh, 
one of the oh, I'm sorry, I'm pressing the wrong button. I'm trying to add the dot com and I keep bringing it away. So, okay, so go to Amazon.com, search for Wes Watkins, and he's got two books up, working on the third one. That's super dope. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Um, and you, and what's the what's the what's the next one called? Um, uh, why fathers need the kids and kids need their fathers. You know what I'm yeah. So, um, yeah, we we me and my son been coming up with the ideas, but we I go into writing in about two more weeks. Nice. And how old is your son now? Uh, he'd be thirteen in February. And he's already writing his first book. That's yep. Dope. That's yep. Just, yep. For, Super yeah. inspiration. So, so riffing off the title of the first book. Uh, so you have a project called Got My Own Sound. Mm -hmm. So I'm always curious when people that have come up in the go-go circuit create their own project. Yeah. But when they create their own project, it's not go-go. Like I'm curious what the why, what's the thought process behind that? Uh, well, for me, I was already, I was already in this mindset, like for years, like I listened to everything, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, um, I didn't like to do a go-go album, in my opinion, like I can't just do a random album and it just fall by the wayside. Right. So it's like, I'm not going to do like, I've actually been like, I have, I actually have the song written to do the go-go album right now. It's just a timing thing. Right. So. I started strategizing like when I'm going to do it, you know what I'm right. saying? And so it was like, yo, let me get all this out first because I need to have an audience so that when I kick the Google joints to them, they can receive it. At the end of the day, yes, I'm in the Google community and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but I'm not the face of the Google band. So people know me, but right. it's like I want, I wanted to hit home when it does. For sure. The, the first album I put out, the guy on sound, joint, that joint hit number six on the iTunes charts and jazz. The second album hit number one. I want I wanted to do the same thing if I do a go go joint. So sure. let me build my audience up. But right? unfortunately, there's no go, there's no go go chart. But no, nah, no, nah, right, right. But see the but see the thing is, I want to have an audience so that when I kick the music out, they they take it on. I'm not trying to just build my name in the city. So I'm not going around yep. trying to holler at all the club owners in the city or whatever like that. That's just me. I try to I go I go my cool. own route. So yep. now that I've built a following and I have a fan base, I have a social media base. Yeah. Now, when I be putting these, when I be on Instagram and I put these go-go covers up and they get these crazy responses, they go viral. Yeah. Now I got you where I want you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So now it's like, now after this album drops that's coming out this month, now I can go to the go-go joint and hit you with it because now I have a fan base that right. always, because my inbox be lit up when I do go-go joints. Like, I'm sure. Yeah. So. Like the sentiment, the sentiment again, like what I was talking about earlier about, you know, like the sentiment seems to be shifting a little bit slight ever so slightly back to like Gogo's kind of cool again. You know what I'm saying? And I'm yeah. not sure that it's, it, I'm not sure that it's skewing young enough uh, to, to really make that much of an impact. But I mean, to have Stevie Wonder and Snoop Dogg do, you know, be yeah. in all those songs within a month of each other is not insignificant. You yeah, know? not at all. And that, And that's the thing, like, it's just been like I said. I just for me, I just wanted it to be correct when I do it because right. anybody who puts out a, a go, like I get tired of hearing the watered down records of yep. other people trying to do go go. You know what I'm saying? So, being somebody that's grew up in this culture and has had an opportunity to play with some of the greats and go go, like I got to make sure, like if I come to the table with an album or whatever. That joint on the thousand. I refuse to have anybody talk about me saying that joint was some that joint was some huff or. Man, that nigga was slipping or what? You know what I'm saying? Well, I hate to tell you, my friend, but they're gonna say that anyway. No, nah, like, yeah, like, but so, but it, you know, again, but, but you know, get what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm not tripping off what people say, but again, I still want to be a strong representation yeah. and be like, when I do it, like, it just wasn't just for the hell of it. Oh, let me put a Google for song. Sure. Yeah, you know what I'm I, I could, yeah, put some intention behind it. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and and do it for real. Which I'm, you know, I've been super proud of you for like, you know, the 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 quality of the videos and the albums and everything that you've been putting out with Got My Own Sound and the show, yeah. showmanship and you know and all that. Like it's, I've been super hype off of that. When you when you built up your, I'm not gonna say when because I mean, you're still doing it, but like as you're building up your social media, how important is consistent content oh it's, keep that going it's, 
it's 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 very important. Like I I have stuff right now. I have stuff playing all the way out to January. I have stuff just sitting right now, just waiting because that's how I win in my social media. Right. Like I win by being consistent. So yeah. it's like I have my I have my motivational videos. I have the drum videos, and I have the picks. And yep. I literally have everything planned out. I literally have everything right now. I have enough content. If I want, I have enough content to drop until March. If I wanted to, how many times a day do you post? Uh, at the most three, at the most, and that depends. Like I try to, I try to stick to one video and maybe two pictures per day. Because I, I need time for the video to sit. I try to do the videos early in the morning for it to sit, people to get hold of it, get the shares and stuff like that. After twenty four hours hit, on to the next. Because everybody has a short attention span. Yeah. You know yep, so, well, that's yeah. I mean, that's that's instructive, and I think that that's that's part of the part of the issue with GoGo as well is the consistency. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. but, but I understand why. Like, it's it. You know, for you, like you can put your phone on a tripod and play the drums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas a GoGo, you know, if you're doing this with serious and company, it's like a five camera shoot and you got to coordinate seven people and you know what I'm saying or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's a whole nother production. And I get that. Um, but that's why also why I, you know, I, I, who was it? I think it was 32 that I was talking to when I interviewed him and I was just like, why, why do you need seven to 12 people in a GoGo band? Like, why can't you do it with like three or four? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, like, I, you can. Right. I mean, I've, I've seen Scooby do it. Right. Well, so that's what I'm saying. Like, you just need like a vocalist, a percussionist, a drummer, and like a keyboard player. And the vocalist could do more. And that's a, one of the things that I really like about Serious Company that really impressed me when I came home uh, and saw you guys was that almost nobody in the band has just one job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Scooby is a vocalist and he plays the guitar. John plays, what does he play? Sax and he sings. And then, you know, Marcus plays keys and he sings. You know what I'm saying? You, you're you the only loser with one job. But, <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? But, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's so you can keep the band relatively small, but still keep the full sound. You know what I mean? Without, yeah. I also think that, you know, I mean, we got to take advantage of technology now you know what i'm saying and i get it like there's an aversion to technology and go go like people are mad at bj for playing a pet while well, they were at least for like a month and i think everybody's cool with it now you know like playing the pads instead of playing real congas and stuff like that but they they sound good they sound the same as regular congas and you go to ohio and you don't have to pay your fucking engineer to go with you that knows how to mix congas and go go yeah they're already mixed, mixed. In the pad. Yeah. you know what i mean and so you can go and you can represent go go Honestly, I just thought about this. Like the way that BJ does it with that pad is probably the easiest way to export go go culture outside of DC that there is because oh, you yeah. don't have to carry all that shit around, which yep. is expensive. And you don't have to hi, you know bring your engineer everywhere you go because they're the only ones that know how to mix go go. Like, you know yep. what I'm saying? Like you're yep. taking multiple problems out of the equation of uh, the issues that have kept GoGo, -Go, you know, sort of restricted to the DC um, area. So yeah, I just, I just sort of thought about that. So that's, that's dope. Yeah. Um, so do you think it's possible to, to ever have like a GoGo -Go band uh, or artist? Well, first of all, let me ask you that because I've asked almost everybody else on this show. Do you need a band to be GoGo? -Go? Um, I think so. I, I think you need to, yeah, because you can't is and and it, and it comes from seeing these other artists that's just hired music regular musicians to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like you need a band and you need somebody who has some kind of go go sense, go go knowledge. In my opinion, to 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 make but that's it two separate things. So I oh, and Are I guess the last thing is, do you need? Do you need a band to be go go? I don't mean like playing live necessarily. I mean, do you need like I mean, if you look back at Stinky Ding or Vinny D, oh, I get what or you, you know what I'm saying? Like those were go go records. Records, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Okay, yeah, I get, but, I get what you're saying. You know, or nah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, no, 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 I get, I get you. Nah, nah, yeah. you don't. And my, nah, you can be good. 
what I'm saying? Oh well, yeah. So I guess I just sort of like it's it, like I, again, I'm just always trying to trying to drill down on if we really if we really do want Gogo to be successful on a larger level, which obviously I do, you know. Uh, instead of doubling down on the shit that has proven not to work, yeah. Let's identify the things that do work that people do like. If we say if, if we start with the premise that we want Gogo to be international, okay. Well, what's the closest thing that Gogo has done to being international recently? I don't mean, um, you know, EU like that was thirty what I how many forty years ago something like yeah. that. You know I'm saying like yeah, it was big and it was huge and no disrespect to them and kudos, but at the same time, like bands were it wasn't that far before that, that big, huge bands were still a thing. You know what I'm saying? Big, right. huge bands in popular music haven't been a thing for a very long time. You know, so you got your Beyonce, you got your Amory, you got, you know, whatever, like the Stevie Wonder, the Snoop Dogg, like this, the Rare Essence joint. It's not even Rare Essence. It's like yeah. a sample of Rare Essence yeah, yeah. from before. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, I get you. So, I mean, yeah. I'm not saying it's not Rare Essence. Obviously it is Rare I, Essence. It's not like the, the whole band went in the studio Two months ago, and recorded this song with Snoop Dogg. It's a sample of "Hey oh, Buddy, right. Buddy" from like the eight. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, like, why not take advantage of? Uh, and and as you can see, I'm maybe I'm trying, but maybe not so subliminally trying to influence your Gogo record. Um, you know what I'm saying? By saying, keep that shit to three or four people and tour that bitch. Oh, okay. you know, I mean that's. You know, you know, you got a good agent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, yeah. Put a small band like that on tour. And see, the thing is, like, and and that's the thing, like, I already have all the pieces. Our the songs are already written. I literally just haven't went in there to record it yet, because, gotcha. like I said, it was just like it wasn't the right time. So now, after this yeah. album come out, it's the right time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I literally like the Congos and stuff. I'm taking care of that. Like okay. because I know exactly what I want and what it needs to be. Because you can play, because you can play congos, like because because yeah. people let you play the congos now, not like before. Yeah, were, you it, know? right. It, it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, they want to let you get on the drums. That's drums, right. Yeah, but it, it, it's funny. Congos. Like people, I think people. It's only like a few that really remember me from con so I'm like, I was playing congos and gogo before I was playing drums. Like, yep. I do this. This is. Even yeah. like you know what I'm saying, like this is this is what I do. So it's like I've literally had everything planned out. It's just a matter of when. So right. you'll you'll hear it. Trust me, you're you're going to hear it soon. Like I am going to start recording in, in 2021 for that joint. That's what's up, man. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. So uh I know that um I know because I have it up on gogotix.co uh as one of our um uh highlighted shows that Serious Company has a live stream from Union Stage coming up on November 13th. Yep. Uh, so everybody make sure you head over to, to gogotix.co. You can get your tickets uh, for that. Uh, yeah, sure. Head to amazon.com and search Wes Watkins and you get can get book. two books that are already out and the third one will be forthcoming. And yep. and uh, you're going to be... Uh, so, so there's a Got My Own Sound album about to come out. Yes. It's called Moonshine Music. It'll be out uh, the day before Thanksgiving. Um, we literally shot, I shot it like a doc. Well, I shot all the promotion and the marketing like a documentary. So I'm, we're chopping all these videos out. So probably by the end of next week, up until the day before Thanksgiving, got my own sound going to be all through your, your IG, YouTube and all that. We have the music. Mo, video. Mo, was Mo, did Mo shoot it? Nah, Mo didn't shoot him. Mo, um, so Mo was busy. And shout out to. I know. I was just gonna say, all right, cool. Then he, what he didn't just tell me. It wasn't just me that he said he was too busy to do anything for. That's cool. Yeah, you know, you know how busy he be. <laughs> you know how busy he be. You know what I'm yep. saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, uh, he did. I got, I got my man, um, my man Lionel. He shot everything for me, whatever, like that. So that's done. Um. Mo is doing one of the new songs we got. It's called uh, Let's Start a Ride featuring Killer Cow, my man Paris Price, and nice. King Los, and my man David James. Uh, it's, it's King crazy Lose from, from Baltimore? Yeah, 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 yeah. Crazy yeah, record. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, um, yeah, Moonshine Music, like I said, it'll be out the day before Thanksgiving, man. We're going to be, I'm about to start releasing all these videos. The single is already shot. Like after the end of next week, you're gonna see everything every single day. So hold on, people, everybody watching, let's recap for a second. 
this dude uh, puts out one to three pieces of content on Instagram every day. Uh, has two books out already. Is working on a third one with his son. Has a new album coming out today before Thanksgiving. Is still playing with Sirius and Company and the Fabulous Thunderbirds. And is about to record a Gogo album that I'm going to produce. He doesn't know that yet, but I'm going to produce it <laughs> or, or co-produce it um, coming up in, in 2021. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's, it's, it's go time, man. That's all I'm saying. Like this, But this is the difference between – and it's not fucking easy. Like you're still doing a lot of shit, and it's still yeah. a struggle, and it's still a grind. And you're, you're – but you're making your way. You know what I'm saying? You got and to. It's like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm so proud of you, man, and Thank and you. wish you the best. And I uh, you know, we talk all the time, anyway. But you know, if it's you know, feel free to hit me up if it's anything that you need at any given time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, um, no bull. I, I'm I'm gonna hit you. We can rap on the go-go joint, though. No bull. I'm gonna tell. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm, I I hit you. I hit you like sometime that we can rap on that joint. No bull. That's what's up. Yeah, I mean, I I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but I am the person that produced the last two Go Go songs to hit the Billboard charts in the last 20 years by somebody not named Chuck Brown, even though don't mind ever give me credit or call me or anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just bullshit. But man, I now, man, I really am proud of you. I appreciate you uh, joining me today and uh, keep you. doing your thing, man. And, uh, you know, we'll we'll stay in touch as we always do. Thank right. you, everybody, for tuning in. And I guess I got to get I got to get the cuz my, my favorite plumber to cuz. Uh, yeah, yeah. El Boogie. El Boogie. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> man. I'm, this is what I'm going to tell you. If I, I live in California, if I have a plumbing problem in California, I'm flying El Boogie out here. I'm he, flying out. Look he's here. Get so you. many times, man. I can't even yeah. tell you. That my I'm man. Here. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. So, all right. Thanks so much, Wes. We'll talk to all you right, soon, man. bro. Appreciate it, homie. Thanks again. Okay. Right, yo. Peace. All right, later. All right. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Appreciate it. That was Go Go Talks, brought to you by Go Go Ticks. Um, you can go to gogoticks.co. You can see all of the upcoming shows that are coming up, uh, blog posts that I try to keep up with as much as possible. Things are a little crazy, as you can imagine. Yeah, film more sound. You need to uh, film a wax. I'm sorry, you do need a Junior Conga sound, uh, which you can get uh, out of the pads without having to find Junior Congas in the middle of Idaho or something where they don't even have them. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in next week. Um, we got uh, Bam Bam Morris, uh, Bam Bam six forty rescheduled uh, from from the week before, uh, and then the week after that is who was after that? Uh, shit, I can't remember. Uh, I remember the last day of the month is um, is my man Diallo Sumbri. You may not uh, know the name. Uh, but he is the founder of the Adinkra Group, who is um, coordinated the Back to Africa um, campaign that took Backyard over to Africa, um, and he works with the uh, the tourism board in Ghana, um, in Ghana and DC, or sister, excuse me, sister cities. So I'm going to talk to him about that. Um, and uh, again, thank you guys for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate all the support that you guys have been giving on these shows. Uh, head over to gogotix.co for all the upcoming um, shows. You can get your GoGo uh, AF t-shirts and uh, champion uh, sweatshirts. I know it's getting cold out there in DC. It's still nice and warm here in uh, California, not to rub it in or anything, but like just let me see if you can see the palm trees and stuff in the back so I can be a jerk. Mm. Oh, but my man Fillmore Wax is on here. He's in California too, but you're you're in Northern California. I think it gets cold up there too. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so thanks everybody for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next week. All right, I'll talk to you later.